Hi, this is Phil Abadakola, director, producer, co-writer of Milkshake. Hello again, I'm Mark. I'm the... Oh, hello again. <laughs> oh, I didn't see you there. I'm uh, Mark Gonzalez. I'm the co-writer of Milkshake. And we are now into episode five. A uh, lot to talk about with this episode. Uh, starting with this opening dream sequence. I, I love this sequence. I think it's when Milkshake became Milkshake. It feels very structured. It was written in a way as to be encapsulated, unlike the first four episodes, which were one episode broken up. This is part of a singular episode that we had really restructured and threw a lot out and put a lot in in order to make it feel like an episode. And this, I think, I dreamed up on my own to make, to convey that Lance was still head over heels for Samantha, which we had shot, I think, weeks and weeks before. Yeah. We actually get to episode five, which is coming up. But I love the music here. It's just lovely and dreamy and uh, just sensual. And it's just, I love this track. It's beautiful. And then we cut to the reality. He's dreaming of Samantha. In the previous, in the commentary for episode three and four, I think it was, uh, I talk about things happening off screen to these characters. Uh, you know, they, they go and get a milkshake, apparently, in between episodes. Right. And curiously, something similar had happened to us in real life, where we realized what we actually had on our hands with Milkshake and how to make the show better mm -hmm. and how to make it into a stronger series. And I think if you look at the differences between those first four episodes and the series as a whole, you really understand just the amount of time that... I, how, how much time do you think there was between shooting the last episode of episode four and episode, the first episode of episode five, like a month probably? At least a month, maybe two months. Yeah. Uh, you know, we, the, collectively the show took, or has taken at this point, we're still in the process of, shoot, of shooting episode nine and 10, but we're looking at a, a year and three months, which yeah. is a lot longer than most episodes will go, and a lot longer than most features will go. So we, have, we had an opportunity to look at, look at the episodes, realize the mistakes we'd made, rewritten, subsequent episodes and even go back to prior episodes and shoot new stuff and yeah. a lot of new stuff uh that's that it i guess it sort of plays into the rule of the uh the iron triangle have we talked about the iron triangle um it was slaves from south africa rum from <laughs> the caribbean and then sugar or chocolate i think right <laughs> What is that one? The triangle trade. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, story, character, and theme. Is that what you're talking no, about? No, I'm talking about something much more practical. Good, fast, ah. and cheap. <laughs> so good, none of what I'm talking good about. Good slaves, fast ships, cheap rum. Mm -hmm. No, I'm talking about... Oh, my God. <laughs> No, I'm talking about good, fast, and cheap. You can either you can have one, you can have two, two. of all three, yeah. but never all three. And so we can either make it good or fast, good and fast, which means it would have been expensive, which is not going to happen. It, the the <laughs> cost would have been prohibitive in that not only would have cost money, but we also would have had to have all quit our jobs, which would oh, in mean, the long term be very expensive. Oh, enormous! A year and a half of our jobs. Uh, or you can have it fast and cheap, which means it's not going to be good. Yeah. Or you can have it good and cheap, which yeah. means you're not going to be able to do it fast. So that's how we ended up with the rather long shoot dates. Yeah. But as I say, you know, the central thesis is, as proud as we are of episodes one through four, I think that Phil and I agree that five and six really show, we really learned a lot from those initial episodes. And I think that the result is pretty pretty spectacular in this episode. I really enjoy it. I, I really like five, especially the top, you know, the first minute or so. Or I, I really really love. And then this is the first time we see our boys in the reality of LA of traffic. On yeah, you know, right outside of that In and Out Burger. Well, on Sunset Boulevard. Uh, now these which, Tron glasses. Oh, the neon glasses. Yeah. Yeah, you found these. Oh, this is the beauty of Etsy, my friend. People make all kinds of amazing stuff on the web, and there's the glasses, and soon to come, the whale, yeah. which I both found on eBay and, and Etsy, and um, 
I found a couple pairs of glasses on Etsy about uh, you know, where these, these this couple just makes these crazy neon glasses, and they're the best that I could find. And they're they're fantastic. They're great. I still have them. I still use them because they're <laughs> fucking amazing. They're sick. So this this scene was this scene was interesting. So we have I, I thought the scene here between Lance and Ned, coverage wise, was one of the more challenging ones. So in order to, in order to cover Lance, I needed to. I wanted to see cars passing between them and behind him. So I needed to park him in the middle of the entire road. So in Sunset Boulevard, uh, just around Orange, so there's a suicide lane. We park them in the suicide lane. They do their scene, and if there's any traffic behind them, we'll, we'll make the turn and come back around. But So we, we have him in the middle of the traffic, so we see the cars passing to, oh, sorry, bef before and behind him. And then for, for Ned here, he is... We're just parked on the north side of Sunset. So this is in the suicide lane, and then we have him parked on the north side here. So we only see cars passing behind Ned. That's why you see cars passing between them when we're on, uh, when we're on Lance slash Danny. Uh, 